is the church so supposed to be first class only? Tickets, church, first class? Let's look at the airplanes then. You got the airplanes? First class uh, says um, there's six foot, eight inch seats. Okay? You get a massage. Uh, you get a door for privacy. And you get a bartender. Ah. All right. Second class. Is this what you're used to right here? Second class or business. You get a full meal. You get a mini bar and a bartender. <laughs> well, they're pushing them bartenders, ain't they? <laughs> but that's second class. I, I guess you got a little movie there. I, I don't believe, I kind of believe I like second class, but I do first class. Third class, premium. You got a slight recliner. It, it don't go all the way back though, does it? That's about it. It go back, If it goes all the way back, it's in the guy behind your seat. I mean, in stomach, lap. Uh, you get a brunch. You don't get a full meal. Fourth class. Fourth class. This is called economy. You got narrow seats. You get peanuts. Got some peanuts. And... Uh, and a other, few other little perks. But that's it. That's fourth class. Now, I don't see no reclining in that at all, do you? I mean, you're just going to sit there. I guess you could put a pillow behind you. But try to take a nap. Okay. So, which, which is the church? First, second, third, fourth. Huh? Which should the church be? Let's discuss it. To identify some of the problems in the churches today, and I'm going to tell you, this just kind of fits the bill. Uh, I've been around a lot, and I've seen a lot, and I've heard a lot of other pastors talk about situations in their churches. So we're going to try to identify some of the problems in the churches today. Uh, Today versus the early church in Christ's day. Big difference. Okay? Uh, James Moore, pastor and writer, he gives us an illustration from the days of the Old West when the major means of uh, transportation across the country was by stagecoach, John Wayne. All of you seen that, fighting the Indians. But anyhow, and I'm sure they never had a bath or nothing like that. So rough in those days, fighting in and dodging arrows. You've seen it all. Uh, but what you probably don't know about the early stage coach is what we just showed on the clip. They had three different kinds of tickets. I want you to listen to this. Keep in mind, we're talking about what kind of ticket does the church have? Or what kind of ticket should the church have? The church meaning the people in the church. All right. Three different kinds. First class. The first class ticket meant that you could remain seated during the entire trip. You got to choose your seat and you got to sit there through the entire trip. What's that mean? Well, no matter what happened... Whether you got stuck in the mud, whether you went up a steep hill and the horses couldn't pull it, uh, or if your wheel fell off of the stagecoach, whatever happened on that trip, you had a first class ticket. You never done anything but just sit there. Does that sound pretty good? I don't know what that ticket costs. Uh, you never had to leave your seat. You could just sit there. Uh, you may have wanted to leave your seat. Can you imagine a wheel running off and you're still, still in there? But anyway, <laughs> wait till you hear the rest of it. Whoa. 
If a second class ticket, you could remain seated until there was a problem. Now, this is second class. In case you would have to get off until the problem was solved, uh, you stood off to the side and watched as everybody else worked. Second class now, keep this in mind. You never had to get your hands dirty. Uh, when the problem was resolved, then you just get back on the stagecoach. But you were allowed to get off of the stagecoach, but you didn't have to do a whole lot. Second class. Now I want you to keep thinking with me about the difference in the church in Christ's day and the difference in the church today. We're using this coach as an analogy. <laughs> you, oh, mercy. This second class. Uh, you got to get back on. You, you take your seat. Maybe the seat was next to the window. Now, would you want a seat next to the window in a stagecoach or would you want in the middle? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah, it's in a stagecoach. It ain't first class today. Now, a third class ticket. Okay. Listen up. You have to get out of the stagecoach. You have to leave your seat. You cannot stay in the coach. You can't even get out of the coach and stand still and watch somebody else fix whatever was wrong, whatever kind of problem they had. All right. You would get off. If there was a problem, it was your responsibility to help solve the problem. If the horses could not pull the coach up the hill, you, while the first class got to sit in there and the second class got to stand aside and watch you, you third class tickets had to get a hold of the coach and push. Come on, horses. You know, all you third class ticket people would have to push. You know what? I can see them really encouraging some people, especially if they had a rough road to go and a lot of hills to climb. I can see the coach line encouraging people to take third class because they don't have to hire anybody to do the work. They take the third class ticket guy and he's going to do the work. Y'all see that? Huh? Oh, they, got, they didn't have computers back then, but are they thinkers? My. But anyhow, <laughs> so now, so it's like today when the pastors call you, you have to answer him. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, so back to the problem with the stagecoach. If you're a third class, you got to get out of the coach, push or help, fix, I started to say a flat, <laughs> or fix a broken wheel, you know. <laughs> Come on, put that wheel on while I'm holding this stagecoach up. <laughs> uh, or whatever the problem was. Oh, and here's the thing. You're doing all this work, the first class person, you're having to lift them up in the stagecoach. First class ticket. Huh? No matter if they're skinny or they weigh 400 pounds. You know. And what, what would go through your mind if you're a third class person having to do all this work and a first and second class ticket holder, they would either be sitting in the coach or they'd be out there under a shade tree watching you do all this. But that's the truth. That's the way it was. Oh. Now, let's compare the average church's tickets to the stagecoach tickets. Let's analyze the first class people in church. Who are the first class ticket holders in church? Well, I'm going to tell you what, most of the churches, you have too many first class people in it. <laughs> We're somehow the pastor or whatever uh, is driving your church, the board, the council, whatever it is, 
we're not getting smart enough sometime to figure out that we need, uh, if, if everybody's got a first class ticket, you're in trouble. So you got to start thinking. I mean, you got to think on your feet too. What that mean? That means as a problem arises, you got to start thinking. How many in here has a first class ticket? Uh, to, to, uh, to complicate it even more, you've got a problem in your church. You got to figure out who's got the first class ticket. And then you got to figure out well, if everybody's got a first class ticket, then how much money do we have? Why would you need money? Because you're going to have to hire it all done. So, if you've got a small budget and you've got everybody holding a first class ticket, you are in trouble. Imagine a stagecoach. How's it going to go if they've all got first class tickets and it breaks down? I don't think the stage line is going to let that happen. Oh. So let's analyze this a little bit more. Uh, you've got a gift from God. Depending on what that gift was and depending on what the need was for your gift, you could become a first class ticket holder based on the gift that you have. You can say, I'm only gifted in this, pastor. I can't do this. I'm no good at this. I'm only good in what my gift is. And we took the gifts test and I know what my gift is. And for some reason or other, I don't know why, uh, my experience in going through all the gifts tests and giving the gifts tests for years and years and years, the women, most of their gifts, their number one gift is faith. So you've got somebody with a gift that's got a first class ticket and their gift is faith. Do they get their hands dirty? Oh, this is hard. Are you, this is rough. I know it's rough, but I'm going to still preach it. Everybody thinks they got a first class ticket. My gift is such and such that, that qualifies me for a first class ticket. These members expect to be catered to. First class ticket holders. They're wanting to be waited on. And of course, everything has to go exactly the way they want it to go. It has to be their way. And if they don't, they get upset. Sometimes they get so upset that they leave the church just because they think they got a first class ticket and that's the way the church operates with people on first class tickets that are gifted in certain things and you don't have to do nothing else. Now, don't you tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about. 46 years of pastoring, 47 years of preaching in churches, 46 years of pastoring churches. And from the very beginning, I've seen people that thought they had first class tickets out of a church, let's just say out of a church of 50 people, out of a church of 50 people, how many people, this, this is proven, how many people do all the work? Out of 50, what number? How many? Eight? 50 people in the church, how many of them do all, how many of them do all the work? Give me a number. Real close. Real close. So, you've got uh, 10 people out of 50 that's out pushing and doing everything else. 
fixing the wheels, any problem that comes up, you get together, any financial problem that comes up, you got to get together and you got to figure out something. Uh, things go wrong, they get upset, and the next thing you know, how many, how many of you ever been around people that it was like walking on eggshells? You didn't want to crunch the eggshells. You just got to walk lightly. Because you're afraid if you say something wrong, it's going to make them mad and they're going to leave. Huh? How many pastors have had to do that? How many pastors do that? I know some pastors that do that. I know some pastors that's pastoring a pretty good church. and They got a pretty decent salary and everything's going fine. So why do I want to upset the apple cart? Why do I want to tell them that they need to be third class, but they're first class? Why would I want to tell them? And most of them don't. Most of them just let things go and don't rock the cart. Then there's people in the church who think they have a second class ticket. They ride along until there's a problem. Then they become detached spectators. When there's a big problem arises in the church, they just want to observe this thing. Let me out of the coach. I'll get out of the coach. I'll stand under the shade tree over there. I'll not do any of the work, but I'm just going to be a detached spectator. In other words, I'm not getting involved. I'm just going to watch and see who comes up with the right answers. And after all, if they don't come up with the right answers, there's 10 more churches down the street I can go to. And then sooner or later, the pastors, they get to thinking the same thing. Well, you know, only got a handful doing all the work. Everybody comes and goes as they pleases, you know. They do what they want to. And there's very little problem solving going on. Uh, so second, second class, oh, detached spectators. Uh, and is it, do you even... Do you even bother, do you even bother if you already know that they're second class ticket holders, do you even bother asking them to get involved? Now, I'm going to throw you in here, I'm going to throw a loop in here. These second class ticket holders most of the time attend church on a regular basis. You can just about count on them, but they're still second class ticket holders. Okay? They attend on regular, uh, but if you, inv if you ask them to get involved in, oh, some program that the church has, oh, no, 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 it's not my gift. You know, uh, some community work. Oh, no, 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 that's, that's not my thing, you know. Uh, handing out some uh, groceries or something. Oh, oh, no, 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 don't count on me for that, you know. Uh, Boy Scout thing. Remember when we used to hand out things for Boy Scouts and take up, you know, hand out the little thing, pass it out on the door. The people put canned goods in their little basket and, and hang it on the doorknob and then you go around the next weekend and pick it all up. Oh, no, 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 Pastor, no. I, I don't have time for that. Okay, so uh, community work, uh, helping out with projects in your church or something, outreach projects maybe, raising funds or something like that. No, 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 don't ask me to do that, Pastor. <laughs> don't ask me to do that. Uh, foreign missions, foreign missions work, helping with them, uh, making uh, arrangements for them, um, uh, maybe because they've come over from the 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 Orient somewhere preaching the gospel and they come to the United States and, and they're needing a place to stay or this, that, and the other. No, no, no. I don't, don't, don't have room for that. Oh. Remember, these are the people, second class ticket holders. They just get out of the stagecoach and watch everybody else do the work. Thankfully, Thankfully, we have 
more members in this church family. Now, I'm not just saying this. I'm not just tooting my horn or tooting your horn. We do have a lot of third-class ticket holders in this church <laughs> willing to give up their seat and then get out of the stagecoach and push, push. What's pushing mean? When, the, when it gets going rough, when it gets going slow, when you, get, when you need extra help, pushing. Where are they? It's one thing to show up for church. It's another thing to show up for church and be put on a committee. Or asked to do something. Listen. It's not good when the people have to come and do all the cooking, and it's a small number, and then they have to do all the cleaning up. They, they cook it, they feed us, we eat it, and then we say, adios, amigos, I'm gone. What's with all those dirty trash cans and sodas and tea and everything all over the kitchen and everything's all spilt and messed up and food in the floor and this, that, and the other, and who, who, who? Third class ticket holders. 10, for everything that happens, you've got 10 people that's gonna be third class ticket holders. Now listen, what, what's that again, third class? That's for any problem that comes up in the church or any work that comes up in the church, any outside activity that comes up. Where are they at? Well, I'll tell you what. I could give a lot of flowers right here. We've got people in this church that will recognize that all this has to be done by somebody. They see it and they'll recognize it. And we've got a lot of people in this church that before they go home, Jim will run around, Kyle will run around, between the both of them, they get most of the trash cans filled up and dumped. And if, if the floors are not mopped or anything, you'll see old Jim coming back up here. And he's just one. Jim, you got a third class ticket, but you're a first class guy. I'm, I mean, I'm throwing out some, some flowers because I see it. And I hear the complaints from everybody. And I know, just from observ observation, well, preacher, get your hands dirty. Get in that slop bucket. Well, what do you think I do when I come up here a lot of times? I'll go over that kitchen. I'll clean the sinks out. I'll clean the tabletops out. I'll clean all this out. I'll make sure all the napkins are in, all the holders. I'll make sure all the salt and pepper shakers are where they are to be. There's a lot of things that I do that nobody but me and the Lord knows. Nobody. It's just there when you get here. I do it for the Lord. You do it for the Lord. And most of our church does it for the Lord because you don't get paid for it. It's for the Lord. Uh, you're a third class ticket holder in his church. Hmm. Uh, when the going gets tough and the going gets rough, you push. You pick up the slack. When somebody gets sick, well, who's going to pick up the slack of all the teachers? Huh? All the children's church, nursery workers, Who's going to pick up the slack and help them? Sunday, Wednesday. Who's going to pick it up? Somebody has to pick it up. Oh, well, they can't count on me. You know? I, and I don't know how many times I've said this. I say the same thing. That's just not my cup of tea. You know? I'm used to working with adults. Am I past the, the stage of working with the 
little kids. Boy, I tell you, it takes patience to work with them. It takes patience. I mean, you really got to have a gift. <laughs> I'd hate to put somebody in, in the nursery or in children's church that did me. One of their gifts wasn't patience, you know. Oh, I'm telling you, but if they get sick, who's going to fill in? Most of you do. Most of you do. Even though, even though, now listen to this, even though they feel unqualified. Now I would feel unqualified to go in there and start taking care of the little kids, the little babies. I've done my, I've done my time <laughs> yeah, years ago. But anyhow, we've got people here that'll do that. They're willing to do their best even though they know, we know that they're not qualified to fix a wheel on the stagecoach, but they can hold it up. Go ahead and put that leverage under there. Pastor, you're a good heavy set guy. Just all you got to do is just sit down on it and to lift the stagecoach up and we can slide the wheel on. I can do that. Third class ticket. Unqualified, but I can do this. Those that are good at repairs. Carpentry. We've got several carpenters in our church, people. And boy, when it comes to plumbing, who's this in the right-hand corner over here up to top? Oh, I know what that was. That was building the gutters, for uh, uh, the trench for the gutters that went on this side of the building. Remember, all the way to the road? Remember, right there by the sign, you was in the hole up to about your neck. It was how deep it was. We had to have them come out and dig that hole. We thought we was going to China. But anyhow, you had to have that so that the water would drain from the back of the church to the front of the church. And it did. So plumbing. <laughs> have you got one of them in this hole out here recently fixing this hydrant? You don't have any of that? Oh, Elvin, Elvin can tell us all about it. <laughs> He's down in there, just his head sticking out. Yeah, and Sam Buchanan was on the other side. <laughs> Handing each other's wrenches just like that. <laughs> oh, man, and hot. Oh, my goodness. I, I'm going to tell you what. I was a spectator. I, I sat over there with, with a cold glass of ice water and watched them. I said, if y'all need anything, holler above ground. Yeah, but anyhow, we've got plumbers. We've got landscapers. Every now, you probably won't see him, but every now and then, Kenny's up here with his grader, grading this chat all the way around the building, filling in the holes all the way around the building, taking his shovel, taking his rake, putting up this little caution signs so the trash man won't run over the flagpole when he comes in to make his circle. Electric work, sometimes we have to hire it done, but I was counting on Alex being here today. I'm going to tell you what, this guy, some of y'all know Alex, don't you? This old boy knows his electricity. Oh, does he? And he not only knows it, he's fast. He's fast at doing it. But anyhow, Alex, we've got uh, carpentry, we've got plumbing, we've got landscaping, we've got electric, we've got cleaning, I already mentioned that, and we've got cooks. Where are they at? Down here, look at them. Yeah, boy. They got talent. Yes. Now, if, if, uh, if you want to sample some of it, just go out there and help them for a few minutes. And you, you know, they're all full by the, time, <laughs> by the time lunch comes. No, I'm just joking. But anyhow, cleaning, cooking, and the list just goes on. Uh, organizing programs. Oh, leave me out of that. 
Ah, no, Stephanie and them, that, that's their cup of tea. Just organizing everything, getting everything right. Well, what if she gets sick? Oh, well, got Donald. Donald can do it. He, you know, he can fill in. Well, what if Donald gets sick? He's been hopping around here for two months <laughs> with his ankle, uh, you know. But, you know, trying to, re- trying to replace people when you have to. If you're a third-class ticket holder, even though you don't feel like you're qualified, you give it your best shot, okay? Just step up and give it your best shot. You'd be surprised what you can do. And uh, what I'm telling you is the stagecoach will never get to its destination if you ain't got third-class workers or ticket holders. You'll never get there. Let, let me just ask you again. In Jesus' day versus our day, how many did Jesus start out with? Twelve. One of them got greedy. Happens all the time. <laughs> One of the 12 got greedy. Had the money bags. Just holding on to them tight, you know. Then he wanted more. So he sold Jesus out. For a little bit more. <clears throat> Left him with 11. But look what he done with 11 people. What, what, what kind of ticket holders were the 11? Huh? You think they were first class ticket holders? Huh? Were they just sat down and did nothing? Now, let me ask you a question. Will Jesus call first class ticket holders into his service? Boy, you better know the answer to that right quick. Maybe he will, but I doubt very seriously if he's going to call somebody that's just going to sit down and do nothing. Uh, If the Holy Spirit, which has to do the calling, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, he's going to nag you to death trying to get you to do something. He ain't going to give up on you easy. You say... Well, I don't have the gift, Holy Spirit. I don't want to do that. I can't do that. You know, I don't want to. Well, do something for crying out loud is what he'll say. But he'll lead you. He'll lead you to do something. In other words, I don't see Jesus calling a whole lot of first class ticket holders in his work today. What would the church do today if everybody was first class ticket holders? Well, what is the church doing today and why is it like it is today? Because we've got too many first class ticket holders. Now that's what this lesson's all about. Just letting you know up front. The third class ticket holders can identify every first-class ticket holder. Just throw that in. Wasn't even on here. Just throw it in. Your music, your sound systems. Do you have any idea what goes on in music just to worship the Lord? Take music plumb out of it. Just take it plumb out. What do you got? Well, you're going to really have a hard time worshiping. You really are. Because music is very important to me. It's very important to a church. It's very important to the Lord. (sighs) Music. Don't take it for granted. Sound systems. Don't take it for granted. They're working back there with antique equipment. And still trying to keep it going. Everywhere you look, you see members and even non-members holding up third-class tickets. Third class. Getting out of the coach, pushing. This church is looking forward to Jesus Christ coming. Let me, boy. I know I'm being accused of just being a radical on the rapture of the church and the coming of Jesus Christ 
and everything in the world that's happening is just right on time for those that know and see. Just right on time. Ah, he's just got hung up on that. He can't get off of it. You better hope and pray I don't get off of it. For your sakes, for your family's sakes, everybody I can come in contact with sakes, you better hope that the church don't forget the rapture because it's here. One day, I won't be here. And you better hope you're not here looking for me. Because he's going to take the church out. And the ones that's left behind, guess what ticket holder you were if you're left behind? I know it's hard. I have to do this once in a while. Preach you a hard ticket. I get so tired of just giving you flirty messages. <laughs> Not lately. Not lately, because the Lord's coming. You need to get ready. Whatever you need to do to get ready for him, you, meet, you need to be doing it. We're looking forward to his coming. I'm looking forward. Take as many to heaven as you can with you. Get as many as you can. Let's see, start with your family if you don't have nowhere else to start. You know, brother, they're the hardest bunch to talk to that I've ever seen. I know it. But, but maybe they'll look at your efforts and maybe you're the only one that can convince them that they need to be ready. And if all else fails, tell them where the lost are going. And if you have to, describe it to them. And then last but not least, tell them it's forever. Boy, if I could just get everybody to understand how long forever is. See, I understood. The minute, the minute that evangelist said it's for eternity, somehow my brain kicked into overdrive and boom, I seen myself in a lake of fire in eternity. And I said, whoa, whoa. That ain't going to be me. That's dumb. Just go in a lake of fire for eternity for some few materialistic things in this world. I don't know what to, how to describe it to you, but I got the lesson. And I've done something about it. it. Took me 24 hours, but I've done something about it. I'm going to heaven any day now. Living every day. In the scriptures, let's look at closing Hebrews 10, 23 through 25. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Third class tickets, without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Encourage one another. That's provoking. Encourage one another to get into God's word, to do good works. Put him first. Put him first. Put him first. Oh, you don't know how important that is. And then last, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. You know what that means? Huh? Church. Pointed times, church, come. It ain't a whole lot. Take some time out for an hour and a half on Sunday morning and an hour on Wednesday night. Don't ask much. Three hours a week? Oh, that's just, that's just too much, Pastor. I can't, can't do that. I got too much going on. Well, you're going to have a lot going on. But exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Oh, well, I have got scripture backing up what's wrong with me, ain't I? I've got scripture backing up. I'm trying to prepare everybody for the coming of Jesus Christ. Anytime 
You're living in a day and time that he can come any time. Fifteen years ago, I said Jesus is not coming yet because the rapture of the church in the seven years, there's not, things have not been fulfilled for him to come. But I can't say that today. Everything is fulfilled for him to come today. 2022, everything is ready. Everything is ready. Are you? And I'm to exhort you. I'm to provoke you. (laughs) I'm to push you. And that's what I'm doing. A lot of people don't like it that way, though. What kind of ticket do you have? Hmm? What kind of ticket do you got? Bow your heads with me, please. Father, I knew this was going to be a hard message. I knew it. There's many times that you lead me into the direction you want me to go and I keep wanting to go in another direction or I keep looking here and looking there for maybe a easier message easier on me easier on the people that are listening and then and then you keep reminding me it's not what I want it's what you want I'm here to divide people just like Jesus was. I'm here to shake people up just like Jesus did. I'm here to tell them the truth, try to prepare them for the truth just like Jesus did. I'm one of your lower servants, Father, but I'm a third class ticket holder all the way I'll do the best I can at what when you call me into this ministry I told you then I said you're digging in the bottom of that barrel of yours I said man there's so many ripe apples and so many good looking apples and so many qualified apples and you're digging down in here and you found this old rotten apple in the bottom of the barrel and you've called me to preach your gospel I said, nevertheless, I know where I stand. I know who I am, but I can't do it without you. And that's still the way it is today. I can't do it without you, Lord. Thank you for your holy presence and the Holy Spirit. And thank you, Holy Spirit. And thank you for all the comforting times that you bring to me and all the encouraging times that you bring to me. Thank you every time that I see your presence in other people, God, doing your bidding because I see you in them. When I see you working in people, I see you, and I'm so thankful. Continue to reveal yourself to all of us that we might see your good works. And thank you for this church and for these that are faithful, God. And I pray, God, (laughs) Give us souls for our labors and give us labors and workers in the vineyard. Without you, we can't do it. But with you, we can do it. Thank you for the promises that you give us and for this day and these blessings. And may Jesus Christ be lifted up and glorified in everything that we do today. For it's in his name We ask it all. Amen and amen.